Green Rising, my friends, welcome back, missed you as, as always, to the most beautiful subscribers in this solar system, in the next several solar systems in our near our location. And if you're new here, hello. Greetings. Stock market had an up and down week at the end of the day or at the end of the week. End of the strong. It, it you know, ended on a, a fairly positive note the past couple of days. It had pretty bad days, The um, I believe, earlier in the week. But then it had a couple of positives. Dow Jones, I mean, these barely moved in any direction. And the crypto market is um, the same as the day. It hasn't been much movement in the markets. So it's usually when you see a consolidation as such, it's ready for a break in one direction or the other. Dow Jones is up 0.1%. S&P 0.15. NASDAQ down 0 0.03. So um, Amazon, a pretty good day on Friday, as well as Tesla and Salesforce. Nike was the big loser on the day, 6% loss. Let's see what news came out about Nike. I had to try to see. Maybe they missed earnings? I don't know. I have to see what happened with uh, Nike, why it dropped so much. A couple of days passed, I haven't heard anything, so that's when I'm like, hmm. Uh, cryptocurrency market over here in the low 40s for the past probably week and a half since getting close to that 50,000 as it goes back to the all time time for Bitcoin at least. And you know, Bitcoin still carries the market. So it's not foolish to not think of it first. You know, a lot of people want to look for the next Bitcoin or the Bitcoin killer, but for what? 42,665, Ethereum 2,922, Cardano $2.29, Binance coin at 349 XRP 93 cents Solana $135 polka dot 29 doge at 20 cents polka dot overtook doge as well as USD so but you see they're all close to each other and if you're looking at the screen you can see I'm going to say the market caps I'm not trying to go through all of them but about 31 mil for USD 29 mil, billion I'm sorry for USD, $29 billion for Polkadot, and about $27 billion for Doge. So as the price fluctuates, those numbers change. So crypto market hasn't changed much. You see in the past 24 hours, they're all around less than or about 1% less. There's been some losses, but not much up. Increase, Chainlink had a 5% increase on the day, almost. So... We hear about that positivity, and that positivity being if someone's in your life has touched you in a way that's meaningful, go ahead and write something nice about them down in the comment section and forward them this video and say, hey, take a look. There's, there's this guy, this nutbag that I want you is not our advisor in any shape, form, or fashion. And I'll say that later. I'll, I'll leave it out of this spiel. Maybe I can all add it into one. But here's the video. I wrote something nice about you. I love you. Tell the people in your life you love them. Say it way more than you than you do, because as long as it comes from a place of sincerity and honesty, it, it won't hurt. So you're not trying to use it to manipulate individuals, then yes, don't use it then. But if you know there are people in your life that you are, you do love, tell them. Why, why wouldn't you? You know, everybody want to be so hard. <laughs> With that said, we will see what is going on. Hey, it's about to be a party, but you got to, there's going to be some special considerations to individuals that have um, Berlin addresses or the, the neighboring um, town as well, from my understanding. So Tesla is having his GigaFest for a country fair that the automaker is organizing for the launch of GigaFactory Berlin. For those who don't know, Tesla has been building two factories. Tesla has a factory that the original one that they repurposed from an older factory in California. 
Then they built another factory. They got one in Shanghai. Is it only Shanghai the other? Only other really factory up and running right now? I think so, which is crazy. So now they're also building one in uh, close to Austin, Austin, Texas and close to Berlin. Um, and they're gigafactories. They call them gigafactories because they're bigger than just a, a mega factory or, you know, just how you say, you know, mega, giga, and terra. They, that's how they decide to name their factories. But they built this factory in Berlin. It's about to open. On October 9th, they're going to do a walkthrough with everybody to show them. They're just waiting for the... Um, Final um, here after uh, almost two years of work, Tesla is now getting ready to launch Gigafactory Berlin. Last month, said that Tesla aims to start Model Y production at Gigafactory Berlin in October, pending government approval. So, that is about to happen. This should be it should be it should be live. It should be live. And these are going to be those new Model Y vehicles, the ones they're building in Berlin, are expected to feature some design improvements like using new, bigger casting parts to reduce the number of parts and possibly even Tesla's new structural battery packs with 4680 sales. I think I'm going to tell you, say it's 4680. It's 4680. And that describes the dimensions of it. I think it's like. 80 millimeters in height by 46 in diameter. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's how I get his name. But what they're describing is that Tesla, instead of you know, like welding different parts, uh, you know, like that would make up like the, this. Just think of the bumper, but you know how most car makers would make, you know, the strip and then this strip and this strip and weld them together or rivet them together to make those parts. Tesla came with the idea like big giant match, you know, how you say die cast. You remember you hear those terms if you ever know about um, toy cars where you can just eject a liquid metal in something in the shape of it and shoo, and now you have the entire part without all the seams and the welds. And even this is going to be a, a way bit of an aside, but 3D printing is going to become part of how they build in the future as well because a lot of manufacturers are going to and learning how to 3d print parts really fast and you know seamlessly using it it makes sense now when years ago they would describe individuals who i'm using quotations now and this is going down a rabbit hole but accept it for a second quote unquote would describe when they were on alien vehicles or what they thought were alien vehicles and they described they had no seams or rivets it didn't make sense until now we know about these new production and manufacturing techniques of 3d printing or injection mold printing of large very large structures so then it wouldn't have any seams or welds because there isn't any when you built it so tesla is about to like i said rabbit hole now we're going to go back to what we can prove and show and demonstrate Tesla factory that they built in about two years. I think they started in like they announced plans to build in November 2019 and so almost less than two years later they're ready to, to get started. And the one in Austin should be announced to be starting not much, you know, I don't believe uh, much further in the future where they'll be announcing that they're going to start uh, building in Austin um, or the production. They're already building and I think it's probably, probably close to completion because they Kind of been planning these around the same time and want to finish around the same time. So interesting things. I think they also have like a battery factory in Nevada. But for the most part, every Tesla has been built, been mostly out of uh, California. And then now in China as well. And, and, you know, they're still selling like almost what? They'll do like a half a million this year. I think they did a quarter quarter last year or close to half. I can forget. Either they did like. Half a million last year and probably get close to um, 75 or, I'm sorry, 750 or uh, they did a quarter and they go get close to half. I think, I, did, I think they did a half last year, close to a half, super close, like at a half, basically half a million, you know, for any intents and purposes. And they're going to try to overproduce again this year. So we'll see. This is a crazy story. I know I could just spend all too much time on it. Um, I recommend definitely going and finding this story and um, reading if you, if you care because it's like one of the 
a futuristic spy plot, but it's happening now. So I'm just going to read some parts of it and give the gist, hopefully, to a super understandable, but this is it. This, this is what we've been talking about and how it plays out on the worldwide geopolitical scale. So the scientists and the AI-assisted remote control killer robot. And this happened, when was this in? Last year, I think. I think this happened last year. Yeah. So last year, this scientist was killed in Iran. And at first, I'm going to do the overview and then come back. Basically, the Israelis designed a remote control gun system using artificial intelligence with satellite relays, put it in a place. Hold on. Pardon me. Put it into place and All right, and took this guy out. So, but the stories we got were conflicting at the time, and then the truth came out, but it sounded so far-fetched, people didn't believe it. So, they go into, this is a very, really, really well-written article, I feel, did their research. Um, this scientist, doctor, I want to keep calling him Mr. It seemed like he had his PhD. So, Mr. Fakri Zadeh, Fakri Zadeh, Fakri Zadeh, okay. Fakri Zadeh, Dr. Fakri Zadeh was a guy who basically was the leading, according to this article, now this could be written with a certain point of view, remember that at all times. He was the main dude who figured out and was pushing to make Iran, or one of the main guys, and made it his life's work to make Iran a nuclear power. And so he was a high up in the military, had his PhD, you know, and, and, and they said to Iran, long story short, Israel had been targeting and killing uh, using Mossad, and I think we talked about Mossad. Since 2004, when the Israeli government ordered its foreign intelligence agency, the Mossad, to prevent Iran from obtaining nuclear weapons, the agency has been carrying out a campaign of sabotage and cyber attacks on Iran nuclear fuel enrichment facilities. The famous Stugnet um, worm that got in and destroyed the centrifuges uh, about a decade ago, I think when Obama was in office, which we think was the United States Israeli, was part of it. There have been some targeted assassinations. This year, there have been fires at these facilities, unexplained. It's been a campaign. Did everybody think Mossad is involved in? So this guy, which was crazy, is that they knew where he was going to be, and they figured out. They said they thought when they first heard news reports from Iran that afternoon were confusing, contradict, uh, contradictory, contradictory. I'm butchering that word now for some reason, and mostly wrong, contradicted itself. A team of assassins had waited alongside the road for Dr. Fakri Zadi to drive by. One report said residents heard a big explosion followed by intense machine gun fire, said another. A truck exploded ahead of the car, then five or six gunmen jumped out of a nearby car, opened fire. Social media affiliated reported an intense gunfight between his bodyguards and as many as a dozen attackers. And I remember hearing all this at the time. And then one of the more far-fetched accounts occurred that several Iranian news organizations reported that the assassin was a killer robot and that the entire operation was conducted by remote control. So that contradicted what people said about seeing this big running gun battle between two different groups of individuals. And of course... It seems in this, in this article, supposedly they talked to Iranian intelligence officials, American intelligence officials and Israeli intelligence officials and got the, hey, this is what happened. <laughs> and they wanted the story out there. So, you know, they didn't wilt away. You know, of course, they didn't put their attached their names to it. But from sources who say, hey, no, we, we want you all to know exactly how this happened. So. You know, people felt like, oh, no, they were just saying some far-fetched futuristic stuff to the Iranians were to save face and be like, you know, how can we defend ourselves in the attack of something we didn't even 
you know, a new paradigm of battle. But that's what really happened. So basically, they said it's straight out of science fiction story of what really happened in the afternoon, events leading up to it, published here for the first time. It's based on interviews with American, Israeli, and Iranian officials. And it basically went down to the debut of a high-tech, computerized sharpshooter kitted out with artificial intelligence, multiple camera eyes, operated via satellite and capable of firing 600 rounds a minute. And what did they do? We're going to, like I said, go through and read it. Or you want they figured out they did to get this guy and that Trump was about the long story, but they wanted to kill this dude. He was like one of the main guys that could never get to him because Iranians were really protecting him. But he had the bad habit of not really want to follow what his detail said and want to drive his own car. They knew Trump was about to probably lose and said this, you know, the reason why they cut off their assassination campaign was because Barack was pushing for or the, I'm sorry, the president, former president. Obama was pushing for uh, peace and negotiations and trying to curb their nuclear ambitions that way. When Trump was in office, they whispered, hey, get back to the killing. The assassinations got back popping. They knew he probably was about to lose. This is their last chance to go after the main dude. They felt they felt he was Suleiman, who was the guy we, uh, uh, or, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, we, we blew him up. The United States blew him up, like, I think, Wow, right before the uh, coronavirus pandemic, it seemed like years ago. Now it's only only a year and a half ago. But he was probably his, um, almost like his counterpart in terms of the, you know, if that was a military dude, this is the science guy in terms of those abilities. You can't see my hands. I'm putting them like a scale, having them equal. Oh, here we go. Anyway. So they said, let's, they got to get this guy, but how to get him is going to be difficult. We're not trying to have a run and gun battle. Somebody said, what if we kind of put together this technology we've been playing with of remote use, uh, artificial intelligence, and, but instead of a drone in the air, we just have a, a, one, a, a gun positioned on the ground. Almost like if you remember the movie, I think Bruce Willis was, this, was in it, The Jackal. Am I, am I remembering correctly? Did he play the jackal? I believe so. And he had that gun that was kind of positioned in a car that was remote control. So this is basically that's what happened. They put a truck up on a um, position and they had another truck that they had situated near it on a, a flat so they can have the cameras make sure they ID'd him correctly. So when he got in position, they had the gun and I'll show you a picture of it here. This was a gun similar to what they used, but it was, of course, disguised inside the bed of a truck. And I probably didn't, you know, this looks like this was be able to mount it on a, um, some type of marine vessel. When I'm, they used a 7.6 to probably NATO round times 51, so 7.62 times 51, which is bigger than the AK bullet, which is 7.62 times 39 millimeter. So 51 millimeter versus 39 millimeter which is typically more of a heavier, it's also a 308 Winchester is the same round, heavier penetrate, armor easier. So this is similar to the gun that they use. They set it up on a hill, had another car on a, up on a jack with um, cameras in it. So when his detail rolled down the street and the detail is like your convoy of protection and yourself, they ID'd him in the car. The other, it, it fed that information back to the cameras on the main gun, which then used artificial intelligence to calculate the speed of the car, when to fire, had control overhead probably from a satellite signal, which was, like they said, a delay of 1.6 seconds. So that's why they had the artificial intelligence that wants to start firing to take over and complete the task from so that there wouldn't be any delay from the humans being involved through the satellite communication. Humans said go, fire and plan solution was fed into the computer, took the first initial shots, said that it, so this was the Belgium, Belgium model FN mag machine gun attached to advanced robotic apparatus by this, um, not unlike the Sentinel-20, and that's what I just showed you guys by this Spanish contractor. First shots hit him in the, da, da, da. Said the first shots fired a burst of bullets, so a shot probably rounds of like brrrr, 
couple a little burst, a little burst at a time. Fired a burst of bullets in the front of the car, below the windshield. Not clear if these shots hit them, made the car swerve, came to a stop. The shooter adjusted the sights, fired another burst, hitting the windshield at least three times. Him once in his shoulder, the doctor, he stepped out the car, crouched behind her front door. Then this is where I think you get a little bit, you got to take it with a grain of salt. So he had three more bullets hit his spine. So if these are three 308 Winchesters, he's down. They said he collapsed in a row, but then somebody ran over and he said, he told, the wife said he told him, they want to kill me, you must leave. I don't think he's talking if he took three 308s to the back spine, but we never know. And then the car was supposed to explode with the ro- you know, with the robotic gun system in it, but all it did was just blew up under it and pushed it up in the air to land, mangled, but still recognizable and figured out. So they probably better plan to have explosives to kind of detonate in a way to kind of ensure that he would tear it to shreds. But so they recovered it. They recovered the gun. And it was able probably to go back and start to work through and I'm sure that they designed it in a way that it would be difficult to trace back but they did have it how crazy is that that's the that's the length that a government will go to take out a, a, a individual in another government but what's the recourse from it <laughs> a little bit more positive news because we do have some other not good so good stories later so let's Run this through quick. Government scientists are creating matter from pure light. If you know, Einstein has an equation. Energy equals mass times the velocity of light squared. And from there, you can confer that light and mass have a relationship. You just need a sufficient amount of energy to be able to convert from light to mass. We do it all the time in terms of explosions of taking matter and converting it to light and energy with explosions but to do it the opposite basically of taking light and and what they've done and i'll just go down very quickly and break it down is a very specific test was kind of thought up about 60 70 years 80 years ago 70 80 years ago now 80 years ago by some scientists who felt that at high enough velocities, if you had two masses of particles flying near each other fast enough that the light friction between them would create, from the photons would create electrons. And so photons are the units of light. They are massless. They don't have any mass or any charge. But when you, electrons have a negative charge and mass. And so if you can, rub photons enough that they create these electrons in there, you've taken light and created matter. Where do we go? How do we use it for anything? At that point, it's all theoretical, and I have no idea of what would be use of it, but it's fascinating to know that the ideas, and I mean, part of it is that to make sure that the way we think the universe works in some ways is right. And so to be able to prove it and to actually prove it and see that it is occurring is very encouraging that other things that we can work on. Because, you know, a lot of things are theoretical until they're ha- in reality. And so if once we start to say, okay, well, this is theoretical, that we are able to, by moving particles past each other fast enough, take light and create into matter, there may be a point. Now, this is, you know, as my brain just started to think of how crazy could it get little small tiny particle accelerator machines we have that we're able to um, put matter in there, rub it together and rub off electrons and even neutrons to be able to start making matter out of basic, um, oh man, that's that's kind of fascinating. Being able to, yeah, use, to use a, you probably have to lose, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm just in my mind, I'm thinking it'd have to be some change. If I'm taking a substance, like they use gold in this case and I'm peeling off that many photons. Oh, well, it may not even, cause I believe it happens in a vacuum. My, cause my thinking is, do you, I do, would I change the gold? So they're using gold particles and they're uh, speeding them up to really fast and running them past each other. Right. That's the uh, matter that they're using to create these 
charged photons that are moving in a certain direction and bumping into each other. But I guess, yeah, no, it's just, it wouldn't change the underlying goal because the gold is separate from it. Those are just the particles that are just charged by the, the goal moving so fast. So theoretically, as long as you have, oh, this may be how you access them. Because, you know, one of the things of science, when you think about it, is that in this space, and if you can't see the screen, I'm using my hand to show like a, I'm squeezing in my hand and like however much air is inside my fist right now. This space has like more energy that can like power. If we knew how to zero point energy, if we knew how to harness the energy just everywhere that flows through everything in the universe, we could power like cities, um, you know, crazily. It's like an infinite amount of power that's kind of in the ether that we don't know how to access. And then maybe that's how you access it. And we run these particles charging it, boom, the what that we can't even see now starts to the light starts to hit and becomes matter that we can use. I don't know. I'm just going off a tangent. Let me get back into what I was saying. Cause they also said they found, you know, a lot of things in their, uh, by fringe in a vacuum, which, you know, by fringe is like we look through crystals and where it were straight lines. Now the light is refracted and it looks like double lines. They were able to do that in a vacuum. Uh, with this experiment. So they actually were doing two experiments in one. Fascinating. It was something else about how they were able to, I think, I want to show where, oh, they're just talking about how they did, maybe in a pyre, where they were able to like guide light through a vacuum by using uh, heavy um, magnetic, magnetic, magnetic fields. Affects the absorption of light by a magnetic field in a vacuum. And I think they were talking about this, how they're able to be able to guide light through a vacuum using magnetic fields, which, you know, makes sense. We know that photons can be affected by magnetic fields. President of Turkey announces war against cryptocurrencies. It's basically that, yeah, as of 2020, and it's not as bad as they say. The way they make it sound, it was like, oh, the president's going against it. It's just... Nothing has changed. Ban came effect in April. In April, the government announced legislation to ban the use in, for, for those who know, Turkey is not, they, it, they may say they have democratic elections or democratic principles, but it's ran from the top down. In, in April, the government announced legislation to ban the use of cryptocurrencies as a payment for goods and services. The official newsletter of the government of Turkey carried the news. The ban came into effect on April 30th. So none has really changed. But they're saying now that in a meeting, the president said that there was a separate war against cryptocurrencies. This was in response to whether, whether the central bank had opened up to crypto and his views on it. Ergon, Ergon's claim that the country definitely doesn't have a problem with the spread of digital assets. He added that they would not give crypto priority, but instead Turkey would carry on with his own money, which he believed is part of the national identity. The president's comments came after the central bank announcement to establish the digital Turkish lira collaboration platform. They're trying to make their own stable coin. That's basically what it is. So he's not against digital assets if it's ours, of course. But, you know, these other ones, why would you want to not have us control your money? And I got a story in about a day or so about the United States is looking to, like, really control our money. Then I must have put that somewhere else. This is where is that at? Where they were? Okay, I, yeah, it's uh, where they're talking about like every transaction over six hundred dollars. They want to they want to know where and why. No, that's a big no no. El Salvador government to be investigated over Bitcoin purchases, crypto ATMs. Basically, somebody just brought up to the. El Salvador's court of account will investigate a complaint. So by somebody complained, like, why are they buying Bitcoin and how they're building these crypto ATMs? So these human rights and transparency group in El Salvador. And look, I'm not opposed to anybody uh, expressing their legal right for anything, you know, but some people with frivolous lawsuits is and I, I guess, you know, you ask yourself. Do a person know they're doing frivolous lawsuits? And the question, yes, some some lawyers, yes. We've seen that this year. Um, I guess they thought there'd be no repercussions, but in the last presidential election, there was a lot of frivolous lawsuits brought 
which had zero merit. And they continue to just bring them just because they want to please one person, which is the definition of insanity. So Bitcoin will, I'm sorry, uh, El Salvador will have to justify their purchases of Bitcoin and how they went about and, you know, hey, that may be a good point. There may have been some backside deal, how they got these crypto ATM machines there. At the end of the day, it's probably, of course, the backside deal. That tends to be how the world works, unfortunately, <laughs> if you didn't know. So we'll just see to what extent it is, if we're able to find out, or if this uh, the president has a way, because they complain that he's um, corrupt or they want to look at him, and he'll just, you know, start making people disappear. U.S. Homeland Security signs $1.36 million smackaroonies contract with Coinbase. And at the end of the day, the long and short of it, and we'll talk a little bit about what this may mean, is that they're using their, supposedly Coinbase already has deals with the Secret Service and the IRS of basically chain, chain analysis software. Sort of like Chainalysis software. And so now they're working with Homeland Security. And I believe we talked about this here before. I talk about a lot of things and maybe not remember what. But that the Secret Service, their first role was protection of the U.S. money and currency against counterfeiting. Then they took on presidential protection. So then their reign roles were to protect the U.S. financial institutions. That's their jobs. And they were under the Department of Treasury and to protect the president. And, and after 9-11, they were put under the Department of Homeland Security. And now the Homeland Security, IRS, and Secret Service are using the software from Coinbase to do chain on chain analysis of the cryptocurrency markets. Not markets, but their chains, basically the transactions between these. And so uh, it's not hard to, to see where that trail leads to, which is they feel that this is something important for understanding and collective for tax purposes, as well as protecting the security of the United States financial system. So they're going to go and Holler at somebody, think they can um, do a good job at it. And that person is Coinbase. Coinbase is being paid by the United States government to help them do on-chain analysis. So for anybody who think this is like some Wild West, nutbaggly like uh, market in terms of cryptocurrency, all these countries and big organizations that we talk about on a daily basis, semi-daily, I mean, you know, I do my best, y'all. Um... The, yeah, it's right there. It's official. It's official tissue. But with that said, I love you. You love you. God loves us. And that's all that matters.